Welcome back to JB Review. Today we're going to take a look at a 2020 Ram 1500 with the Eco Diesel. I have not had a chance to do a video on this. I'm going to warm this thing up. We are actually going to be driving this, then driving a 5.7 today. I want to kind of see what kind of fuel economy I can get. It's about 46 degrees outside right now. So hang tight and we're going to get right into it. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a 2020 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4. Base price comes in at $42,640. And this is painted in that pretty Del Monaco red. I think it's one of my favorite colors for the Ram trucks. And this does have that three liter diesel, which is optional. This is the third generation for it too. This is just a quick short listing of your standard equipment. And this truck does have a 321 rear axle. Starting off the options is that Del Monaco red is $100. And it does have the deluxe cloth bucket seats at $495. Bed utility is going to come in at $845, and then you can see everything that's listed there. This truck also has the North Edition package. And it's basically going to give it everything that you see listed here. One package that definitely considers this Bighorn Level 2 equipment group. Take a look at the things that come here. You have the storage bins in the second row, dampened tailgate. You also have the 8.4 inch display, dual climate control, Apple CarPlay. You also have the uh, Class 4 receiving hitch gives you the upgraded cluster which is definitely useful and there's so many other things like power seats all this good stuff comes in there now this truck was optioned with the 392 axle and that's what you're gonna need for max tow now if you do want that 3 liter diesel it's gonna set you back you ready $5,000 it's a lot of money and you see it has a lower active grill shutter so that's gonna help with you know keeping the temperatures um, warm inside the engine bay and it does have the rear wheelhouse liners and it has a trailer brake. Destination comes in at $16.95 and you have a total price of $55,350. And then this is just gonna show you the fuel economy numbers for this truck for four wheel drive. And here's a quick zero to 60. Now, if you're not familiar, this is not the first generation for the Eco Diesel. They did have one back in, I believe it was 2014 to 2016, and then they they took it off of production because of uh, emission issues, and they brought it back. Now, that that first Eco Diesel that they introduced for the Ram had 240 horsepower, and it had 420 pound-feet of torque, which was pretty good numbers actually, especially for this segment. And Although that first iteration of the Eco Diesel was not really reliable, I will say I'm pretty interested to see how well this one does. Now, one thing I do know about this engine is it does have a very expensive oil change. So if you're looking at this and we go to drive the 5.7, if you're kind of in between which one you want, I would definitely strongly recommend that you do some research before you buy the Eco Diesel. Because if you're gonna pay a premium for a diesel on this, there's not much benefit compared to when you're buying a heavy duty truck. Check out the Eco Diesel under the hood. Now this one is gonna be good for 260 horsepower. And you ready for this? 480 pound-feet of torque. This is about 18% increase in torque. And what's also interesting is the power comes on 400 rpms quicker than the previous generation which is pretty interesting too i mean that's why this truck has such high towing capacity numbers over that previous generation but this thing has definitely been reworked too i mean there's a lot of things that they've done one thing that i'd like to mention is it does have the compacted graphite iron block and that's going to help with overall strength now i am doing a different route this time around for my philly economy run and this might be my new route just because this Saturday is kind of busy. There's like a lot of traffic for Saturday out in this area. So I want to try to avoid that and kind of have a consistent drive today. But overall, like I said, the speed limit is about 45 and then it turns into 50 miles an hour, but I don't do five over. So 55 or maybe I might even do 60, I don't know, depends on the car in front of me. But really want to see how good a Philly Commie this bad boy can get. Now I have driven these in the past and I have reported that these equal diesels do get good gas mileage. Like I think I got like 27 on a similar route. I drove one for like 21 miles one time and it got really good gas miles. I was really surprised. I mean, I was actually doing some grades too. So it was pretty surprising that even with the grades, it still got decent fuel mileage. I'm at 
28.6 and what I'll start doing is this is about five miles so there's a traffic circle here so I'll make a loop back around to go the opposite direction and then this will basically take us to the dealership I want to hear what you guys think about this Delmonico red I really like the way it looks especially with the black accents on the front grille painted bumpers front and rear also I wonder if the North Edition is giving it the painted bumpers. It doesn't say it on the window sticker, but I have to assume because it doesn't have a sport appearance package on it. You do have an 18 inch alloy wheel wrapped in 275, 65, 18s. This truck does look unassuming though. It doesn't look like you have a diesel until you see the emblem on the side of the truck here. But yeah, really nice truck, very clean. Very clean lines, nothing really new for 2020 in terms of the exterior design though. As you saw on the window sticker, you do have bed utility and that is going to give you the deployable bed step. Bighorn Equipment Group is also going to give you the dampened tailgate. And check out your spray and bread liner. And they do give you a button inside to turn the lights on for the bed too. Those are going to be LEDs on the side and then you have incandescent at the very top there. Out back you have dual exhaust, class 4 receiving hitch, and I like how the painted bumpers look. This Del Monaco Red is really pretty. And then you have your 4x4 North decal. I always make statements about how quiet and how much refined the uh, heavy duty trucks have become over the years. But when you jump back into a half ton truck, I mean, there's just no comparison. I mean, just the overall quality of the ride. I mean, this truck is just so smooth. Now, this is riding on the 18 inch wheels, but overall, I man, like I said, the ride is just so comfortable. This diesel is pretty smooth, too. The eight speed inside of the truck is kind of busy for some reason in this truck. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just maybe. It could be how I'm driving it. I don't know. It could be me. But it just seems kind of busy right now. I, I, kind of went from 45 to 55 and I feel like it's kind of trying to find its perfect you know rpm range or something like that but it's it's still right at 1500 rpm so I'm at 55 miles an hour and like I said we put almost 10 miles on the truck but overall man it's just really comfortable to drive I mean this is probably my sixth or seventh 1500 I've driven from Ram and whether you have this engine or whatever one you have they all have a really good overall feel on the road i mean you could take this on a long trip and, and almost forget your driving the truck now inside the interior you do have a really clean layout i do like the way they lay out the buttons you do have auto glass out front the rear is going to be manual and they do give you power outside mirrors also they do give you cup holders on the front door telescoping steering wheel automatic headlights and this is your seven inch cluster screen now one thing i like about having that Bighorn Equipment Group Level 2 is that it does give you this and you get the 8.4 inch display. Dual climate control comes with that. The brake controller was optional as a standalone, but I strongly recommend even if you don't plan on towing a trailer, this in my opinion will add resale value just because you don't have to add this after the fact. Now this is how you control your full wheel drive system and you do have a locking axle with that North Edition package too. But clean interior, I love the way it looks. The only thing I don't like about the interior is that they give you this really nice gray, which is really nice, gray and black. And then they give you like this tan roof, like it just, just doesn't go well in this truck. I, I really think that they should have did something a little different. Now when you start the truck, the buttons down here do illuminate for you so you have traction control, tow haul, and front and rear parking sensors. I'm going to show you guys a few things out back. These are going to be your floor match for the truck also because they came with the North Point Edition. So as you saw on the on the window sticker you do have these storage bins down here that do actually come out too if you need to wash them out. And you do have a lot of floor space that you can probably add two big boxes back here or whatever you need or if you have a big dog that would fit perfectly back here. They give you your air vents and you have four USBs and auxiliary plug. All right, here we are. So we're almost back at the dealership. But this is really good feeling coming. We're right at 27 MPG. That is, that's really good. I mean, you see the temperature's 43 degrees outside. And, you know, I don't have a grill cover or anything like that. Now this does come with like, like grill shutters 
from the factory so that could help also with the overall temperature keeping this bad boy warm but overall i am happy with the fuel mileage we're gonna make this turn here we got one more turn and then that'll effectively stop the clock on here we're back at 27 it's probably gonna lose just a little bit going up this little hill but yeah that's not bad at all we clocked in at 26.9 that's really good anytime you're in the market for a 2020 Ram 1500, you're gonna see these numbers for the Eco Diesel. Gross axle weight rating in the front's gonna be 3,900 pounds. Rear's gonna be 4,100 pounds. And you're gonna have a gross vehicle weight of 7,200 pounds. Total payload's gonna be 1,581 pounds. All right, so we're gonna take out the 5.7 next. Let me warm it up really quickly before we take it on the loop because I got that diesel pretty warmed up. So I'm gonna drive it for about three or four minutes before we start and then hopefully It'll be at least to operating temperature. See you in a second. We won't spend too much time on this window sticker only because it's pretty much the same truck. But if you are interested, Billet Silver Metallic is the paint on this truck. And as you see, North Point, it also has the Bighorn Level 2. And then you have that 57392 axle and then trailer brake controller. And then destination and total price. And then here's the fuel numbers for the truck too. All right guys, so the truck's all warmed up now. I just started. So I want to mention, you know, as you guys just saw on the window sticker, the trucks are pretty much identical. I mean, that's pretty cool. And normally, you don't normally have trucks this close, but they pretty much have almost the exact same uh, options and features. And this truck, as you saw, does not have e-torque, which I did not want it to have, but it does have a 392 axle, so this should be pretty interesting. I already can tell you right out of the gate, I really do like the power feel that you get from that 5.7. It's probably just because you can hear it, which makes it so much more fun to drive, but overall, like I said, I mean, I want to see what the fuel mileage is going to be because that's always going to be important. Most people who drive trucks today, I know a lot of guys say like, why, you know, why so many MPG runs, things like that, but one thing I will definitely say is a lot of people do use trucks today not for towing but just for normal driving they feel safer in them and this is something that I find that's pretty important I mean it would be important to me if I was driving a truck whether I was towing or not but fuel mileage is important I mean I like to save money as much as I can and as I mentioned earlier the diesel is a little bit more money up front and on top of that the maintenance is just way more money too so you really have to figure out what's going to work best for you I want you guys to kind of see the RPMs here. I'm at 50 miles an hour and we're right at 1400 RPM. So it's about the same as the diesel. I mean, of course, they use the same transmission, so that's not surprising. And then this gas engine, just like the diesel, it's just quiet. The only thing different is when you put your foot in this one, it, you can just hear that Hemi just open up. It's just so, so loud. We are pretty much at the loop. And we're at 19.1. That is good mileage. Oh, my bad. Gee whiz. Chuck out a little bit. Of... <laughs> that was pretty funny. I did not even put my foot down. It just has so much low end torque. Wow. All right. So we're going to go ahead and head back on the other way. And then I will show you guys where we end up at. So this is going to be your 5.7 liter V8. Now this does have MDS too, so you will drop down to four cylinders when you are on the highway cruising. Now this does have 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. That's still big numbers for this type of engine. And of course, if you would like to step up to the e-torque, that's going to give you best-in-class towing capacity even over the uh, diesel. And here's 0 to 60 for the 5.7. All right, so we're pretty much back at the dealership. We're at 18.3. I think we finished like what, 26 point something? I can't even remember, I guess. I just, I should have taken a note, but I forgot. But we gotta take two more turns though, and that'll effectively end it for the 5.7. I'm actually really happy with these numbers. We're at 18.2 now, going up a slight incline. And we ended up at 
18.2 not bad and if you are interested in this color this is what it looks like it's pretty much the same exact truck so we won't go over the same thing over and over again now I did not have the bed utility group that was like the only thing I did notice so you don't have that bed step and you don't have the spray and bed liner and the tie downs inside of the bed too and it looks like you don't have the LEDs either all right let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers so pretty much the same situation here the diesel did have a higher gross fuel weight at 72 this has 71 but the axles you know seem to be the same thing payload is actually slightly higher here also even with it being down on GVWR at 1650 all right real quick before we end I wanted to show you guys the numbers for this truck now this is gonna be for the 5.7 unfortunately they're not showing anything for the diesel yet so maybe I'll do a follow-up on this for another truck in the future but 392 axle this is gonna be your payload capacity for this truck now if you do go for a lesser axle ratio this does not drop your payload here it only messes with your towing capacity but this is what you really want you want to have max tow that way if you do want to put a 9,000 pound trailer you can stay well within your limits here but if you do drop this down to like a 321 which is going to be standard it does significantly affect your towing capacity so just keep that in mind um typically you know you want to try to be as much within your limits of your truck that way you don't exceed your gross combined weight rating and if you're interested this is just showing you the towing capacity for the diesel engine like i said this is going to be based off of a base model truck but again thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful but be sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video